what I'm going to be tying here is a pattern I like to call carp candy corn. As you kind of seen in the introduction with the tie that was spinning, you can tie it with a bead head, and I'm going to put some lead behind this bead head, actually lead free wire behind this bead head, but you can also tie it in other forms as well. Um, here's one form I've tied it in using bead eyes to help it sink. And this is how the fly would actually orientate in the water when you're fishing for carp with this. Uh, if you've never done carp fishing or you're wondering why you go carp fishing, I always like to think of it as redneck bone fishing. We don't have any bone fish here in Kansas and I'm quite a ways away from places that do have bone fish. But you can get kind of this similar action and a similar fight out of a carp. They're very strong fish. They, they, put, one, they put up one heck of a fight on a fly rod and they're just fun to catch. So we're going to start off with this. I've already got this bead head on here and this is a 2.4 millimeter bead head in chartreuse and I'm going to take some of this lead free wire in 0 .02 and I'm going to give it seven wraps. Um, seven seems to be about the good number. There's one, there's two, three, four, five, six, push that back a bit, and seven. And we'll just go ahead and break that off. Let's go ahead and finish that wrap too. And then here at the back, we'll go ahead and wrap that just a bit. And I'm going to break it off. And then I'm going to shove that into the back of my bead head. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I kind of get over perfected perfectionism on it, but it really doesn't matter. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some UTC 70 in yellow, and I'm going to tie this right in behind this lead-free wire. Kind of build up a little dam. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap through my wire a couple times. And I'm going to finish up right there. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of this red crystal flash. I'm going to cut off a little piece of it. I'm going to fold it in half. Take another cut. I'm going to take those pieces and fold those in half. And cut it one more time. Go ahead and tie this in at this point. Sometimes that'll happen. You get a little overzealous with your pull when you're tying that in. If you're not happy, always go back. So we'll try this again. I like to tie this as far down the hook shank as I possibly can. I actually tip my vise to the side a little bit of my rotary vise to make sure I got about all the way down there. Once I'm there, I'm going to come all the way back up. I'm going to snip this little part off here. And I'm going to come to the back. And we'll get these four pieces and then these tails you can leave them a little bit long but I always like to use this 
this point of construction in my vise right here is a guide so I get them all the same length and then cut it right there <coughs> excuse me and then I'm gonna come all the way back down to the bottom of this fly next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my Wopsy Prism SLF dubbing and I've got it in yellow and I've got it in red they're actually calling this red it looks more like orange to me and I'm gonna take an equal amount of those so I've got an equal amount here and an equal amount of orange here and we're gonna blend these together and this needs just a touch more orange And when you get it blended and you're happy with the blend, how it looks, then we can go ahead and start dubbing this on the, on the thread. On this one, I try to keep a, a regular taper like you would for any type of fly. Kind of fatten the body a little bit. And when I get to this point, to the back of the wire, I'm going to stop. That's why I always use about six or seven turns on that, because I want my, my body to stop about there. And it's right in line with the hook point, just a little bit far forward of it. But that's about where I want to start the uh, Palmer hackle of this. I actually have something called Palmer chenille in orange, and this is a size small. I got this from a local shop I found online. Um, another fellow fly tire, Kim Burnett, ties a lot of crappie flies. And I asked him where he got some of his chenille and some of his other stuff because it was a lot better than what I could find elsewhere. And he said, go to Grandpa Bob's and that's where I get all my stuff. I went there and they have some really neat products that I've not been able to find anywhere else. Uh, they're great for jig tying. Um, they're really great for other Midwest style tying. So that's where I get some of my stuff for carp and some of my stuff for crappie. But I'm going to take this, the chenille, it's kind of like a brush, and I'm just going to tie this in right on top of that wire. And I'm going to go ahead and work my entire way down right up to the back of the bead head. And this we will palmer on. By palmering, you take it, you pull back all the fibers, and you just do one wrap right in front of the other. And we're going to do this until we get all the way right up against the head. And on this very last one, when I pull it up, I like to give it a little tug because that'll actually cinch it in a little bit better. And we'll give it two loose wraps behind. I'll go ahead and cut this off. Come 
come in with my whip finish tool. And there you have the carp candy corn. Hope you enjoyed this pattern. Hope it helps you catch some carp. If you liked this pattern and you like these tying videos, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much. Have a good night.